Ohayo mina! I will be your first reporter for the topic Sanitary Drainage System. The video took longer than what we expected, so bear with us. Let us start with plumbing. Plumbing connotes fixtures and piping installations that will supply water and dispose waste in various forms. It has two main objectives, which is to supply water to different parts of the building and to remove and discharge human wastes and other substances out of the building into the public sewer or septic tank. By other substances, it means that not only water is being discharged but also gases and other materials which will be discussed later in the video. Next is the plumbing system. The plumbing system is the combination of supply and distribution pipes for hot water, cold water, and gas, and for removing liquid wastes in a building. It also includes plumbing fixtures and traps, soil waste and vent pipes, storm drainage pipes, house drain and house sewers, including their respective connections, devices, and appurtenances within the property lines of premises. The water supply. Water is a combination of two substances, namely hydrogen and oxygen, or as we all know as H2O. Water has three natural states, the liquid, solid, and gas state. The liquid state is 830 times heavier than air, while the solid state is in the ice form. The gas state is in the form of vapor or steam, which is 133 times lighter than air. So, water has three sources, namely rainfall, natural surfaces, and underground water. First is rainfall. From the word itself, it is obvious that we can get water through rain. The advantages of rainfall water is that we can obtain water directly from our roofs and watersheds. It is soft, pure, and good in places where there is an abundant rainfall. Soft and pure means it is natural. However, the disadvantages of rainfall as a source of water is that it is hard to store for a long time as it will be a breeding place for mosquitoes. This is the greatest disadvantage of rainfall as a source of water because it is not clean since it is not treated, so there is a high possibility that the water contains bacteria. It also requires big containers for storing big quantities for long uses, it is bad for places that receives a little amount of rainfall, and lastly, roofs may not be clean. The second one is natural surface. The advantage is that we can obtain from ponds, lakes, rivers, and the like. It is easy to procure, and it is good for localities near such bodies of water. The disadvantage is that it is dangerous because it contains large amount of bacteria organic and inorganic substances of varying quantities. The third one is underground water, which is from dug and deep wells. The advantages of underground water is that it can be obtained from below ground surface by means of mechanical and manual equipment. More water can be obtained depending on the equipment used and the locality or the place since there are places that have more underground water and there are places that have less. The disadvantages is that because of various organic matter and chemical elements present, it requires treatment of various nature, such as sedimentation, chemical, filtration, and aeration. And these are the common impurities of water. Number one, entrained gases, which are carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, methane, oxygen, nitrogen, and organic compounds. Number two, dissolved minerals like calcium, magnesium, sodium, iron, and other carbonates and silicates, alkyl benzene, sulfate from detergents, and synthetic organic from insecticides and pesticides. Number three, suspended and colloidal materials, like bacteria, algae, fungi, silt, protozoa, and other colloidal matters making the water colored and acidic. And lastly, number four, radioactive materials which comes from mining or processing ores or by waste from industrial use of radioactive materials. Among the minerals present in water, through artificial means, is lead. Now let's move on to waste. There are two classifications of waste, namely solid waste and liquid waste. Solid waste are wastes being discharged by water like feces, hairs, food, and etc. While liquid waste are wastes coming from various fixtures, 
It is also known as wastewater. Wastewater is sometimes referred to as sewage and it is used water. It comes from almost all sections of the building, including bathrooms, kitchens, laundry areas, and in commercial projects, equipment being serviced. There are three grades or degrees of wastewater. First degree is the storm water, which comes from the rain. Second degree is the gray water, which are wastes from laundries, basins, sinks, showers, and bathtubs. And the third degree is the black water, that is water plus human waste, solid and liquid, that is flushed out of toilets and urinals. So, before proceeding to the main topic, I want to share what my friend, Max Fajardo, the author of Plumbing Design and Estimate, said to me. He said that, the drainage system as a whole, consisting of various forms of waste and vent correlations, forms one unit system. So the study of drainage system is somewhat difficult to comprehend due to the use of strange terminologies, plus the many complex considerations brought about by the effect of nature. So even if these terminologies are defined, it would still be difficult to understand unless visualized in actual pipeline installations. Now let's delve deeper into the sanitary drainage system. What is sanitary drainage system? Sanitary drainage system is actually sanitary drainage and vent system. It is sometimes referred to as the drain, waste, and vent system or the DWV. It is a network of pipes that remove wastewater from a building. It has two sides, the sanitary drainage and vent system. It is also known as a gravity system. Now, what is DWV for? D means the drainage pipe. It is the drainage of solid waste. It means it receives and conveys discharges from the water closet. W means the waste pipe. It is any pipe that receives the discharges of any fixture except water closet. And V, the vent pipe. It is the ventilation of the piping system. It functions as air passage or conduit to ventilate the drainage and waste pipe installation. There are two types of drainage pipes, the soil pipe and the waste pipe. The system operation of a sanitary drainage system is divided into two, the sanitary drainage side and the vent system side. The sanitary drainage side of the system consists of traps at each fixture, fixture branch, stack, drain pipes that carry wastewater away from the plumbing fixtures and out of the building. Water transports waste into the sanitary drainage piping and out of the building sewer line, leading to a community wastewater treatment plant or to a private sewage treatment system. Gravity is the driving force behind wastewater flow, so the sanitary drainage system is also known as a gravity system. While the vent system side of the system introduces and circulates air in the system, to maintain atmospheric pressure in the drain lines and ensure adequate gravity flow of wastewater. The vent system also exhausts sewer gases to the outdoors. So because organic waste in wastewater tends to decompose quickly, one of the primary objectives of the sanitary drainage system is to dispose of decaying waste rapidly before they cause objectionable odor or become hazardous to health. The sanitary drainage system should also accomplish the following. One, fast removal of the water with a minimum probability of leakage and stoppage of drains. 2. To prevent the entry of house vermin and of nauseous gases into the house from the piping system. And here are some of the mandatory requirements for a drainage system. It is said that all plumbing design and installations are governed by a set of rules and limitations prescribed by the National Plumbing Code, which provides that all drainage system must be conformed with a set of requirements enumerated as follows. 1. All pipe joints must be well fitted and tightly connected with each other to prevent leakage of gas and liquid. 2. The drainage pipe should be graded or inclined properly for a downward gravity flow of water towards the main sewer line or to the septic tank. 3. The drainage pipe should be provided with adequate cleanup accessible for repair in case of stoppage. 4. The drainage system must be provided with ventilation pipe that will convey gases to the atmosphere where it can do no harm to human health. 5. Except for water closet, each fixture shall be provided with suitable trap that will prevent backflow of gases. And lastly, 6. 
the drainage system must be vented to avoid siphonage or backflow of the water seal. Now let's discuss about the components of the sanitary drainage system. So this is a brief overview of what we will be learning about the components. We'll learn about its type, the size by calculating, we'll use basic multiplication and addition, the slope or grade, we need to properly incline the pipe so that there is a smooth flow of wastewater, how to install what the requirements needed. The requirements are based on the National Plumbing Code, which is also based from a series of tests conducted from the past. We will not further discussing about these requirements, but I already included it in the handout. And lastly, the cleanout. This is a heads up for you guys so that you will not be confused why there is a cleanout in every component. Trap. Trap is a device scientifically designed to prevent the backflow of gases coming from the septic tank or sewer line passing through the outlet of the fixture. It is a U-shaped pipe that catches and holds a small quantity of wastewater that is poured down from a fixture drain. It was invented to block the pipe so that gases didn't pass. It is also called a stench drop. The basic function is to prevent objectionable gases from entering the plumbing system. The principle is to form a mechanical barrier against the passage of sewer air. It was in 1856 that the first trap in the U.S. was innovated. So the water caught in the trap acts as a barrier between the gases from the septic tank and the air breathed by the room occupants. Traps are made of steel, copper, cast iron, brass, plastic, with plastic most commonly used, except those in water closets and urinals, which are often made of vitreous china cast. Trap seal. The trap seal is sometimes referred to as water seal. It is the column of water that is retained between the overflow and the dip of the trap. There are instances where a trap seal may be broken. Number one, if a fixture is infrequently used, Water in the trap may evaporate, breaking the seal of the trap. With the water seal not working, gases may back up from the sewer and drainage pipes through the fixture and into the building. Number 2. The water seal in a trap may be broken if there is a great deal of vacuum pressure in the pipes. That is why a vent system is attached to reduce the vacuum and to equalize the pressure throughout the system. And lastly, the deeper the seal, the more resistance to siphonage but the greater the folding area. Therefore, a minimum depth of 2 inches and a maximum depth of 4 inches are common standards. Some water sealed traps are classified as permissible trap and objectionable trap. We'll focus on the permissible trap which is pit trap and the drum trap. And these are the objectionable traps. Tests of these traps show that the most practical form ever developed is the pea trap. Originally, this pea trap was called gooseneck, attributed to its form like the neck of the goose. It is the most common and acceptable type of trap. Its size ranges from 32 to 50 mm in diameter. Water sealed pea trap is classified into two, the common seal and the deep seal. The common seal pea trap has 5 cm deep water seal between the overflow and the dip that will offer resistance against abnormal conditions. While the deep seal pea trap has from 7.5 to 10 cm column of liquid content between the overflow and the dip. This trap may be used under normal conditions, but it is purposely designed for abnormal situations such as extreme heat condition in the area increase and decrease of atmospheric condition, and lastly, the circumstances where total ventilation cannot be obtained. The P-Trap installation is based on the National Plumbing Code. We will not discuss it further since it is already included in the handout. The Drum Trap The Drum Trap is also classified as a water seal device. The name was derived from its size being large in diameter. It has the following special features. The advantages of the drum trap is that greater amount of water may pass through in it in a shorter interval without the danger of a trap or loss, and it has a higher resealing quality than the pit trap. The disadvantages of the drum trap are it is large and cumbersome, it is unsightly if the installation is exposed to view, 
To clean out cover mechanism is above the water seal, and to clean the drum trap, it needs lubricant and a fiber washer at the joint between the cover and the bed of the trap. Size of the fixture trap The size of the fixture trap depends upon the class of users the installation will serve, which will confirm the values in the table. Remember that the nominal size of trap and waste branch for a given fixture shall not be less than in the given table. Fixtures to be installed are classified into three. Class 1 for private use, Class 2 for semi-public use, and Class 3 for public use. Here is a table for the minimum trap and drain diameter in millimeters for these classes. House trap. The house trap is a device installed in the house drain immediately inside the foundation wall of the building. It serves as a barrier and prevents the gases coming from the public sewer or septic tank. The use of house trap has been a controversy that divided sanitary authorities. According to the sanitary authorities, a house trap must be installed whenever there is an element present that is dangerous to health or life. However, public authorities favor the elimination of the house trap because its presence adversely lessens the discharge capacity of the sewer. Interceptors Interceptors are passive devices designed into a plumbing system that trap, separate, and retain toxic or undesirable substances from wastewater before it is discharged into the sewer line. These substances include grease, fat, oil, hair, sand, clay, or wax, which are accidentally or intentionally placed into a building drain, which potentially creates blockages that can cause backups, overflows, or contamination of wastewater. Some kinds of interceptors include number 1, grease interceptor, or grease trap or grease basin. It is a device installed on plumbing system serving kitchen of hotels, dining rooms, dub houses, and restaurants. It also receives wastewater from sources such as sinks, dishwashers, floor drains, and washing area drains before draining it to the municipal sewer system. It has a capacity of 1,000 gallons or more. It is also must be located at least 10 feet from the hot water faucets. The second one is oil sand interceptor. It separates and removes flotable materials and settable materials. It is used by manufacturing plants, vehicle services facilities, car washes, and others. The third one is hair interceptors. It is used by barber shops, beauty salons, pet grooming facilities, and other establishments that discharge hair and other fibrous materials. Remember, an interceptor must be readily accessible for periodic cleaning, inspection, and testing. The efficiency is also dependent on the attention given to it. The waste pipe. Generally, waste pipe is smaller in size than the soil pipe. It is smaller because of the kind of waste it receives from the various plumbing fixtures. Solid human waste is discharged by water closet only to either soil pipe, soil branch, and soil stack. Always remember that any pipe that receives and conveys human waste is affixed by the word soil. When a waste pipe is not directly connected to a soil stock or house drain, it is called a special waste. There are general conditions for a good waste pipe installation. Number one, by making the right choice of materials. The character of the waste to be drained and the service to which it is intended for dictates the kind of materials to be used. And number two, by conservative use of fittings. It refers to the right choice of the right kind of fittings. One of the primary consideration is that there should be a smooth flow of wastes inside the pipe and injudicious use of fittings should not be allowed. Pipe installations that fail or break too soon may have been due to any of the following. The use of too many fittings and the use of wrong type of fittings in a particular location. Here are some of the recommendations. Number 3. The Location of Cleanup The waste pipe installation must be provided with an ample number of cleanup. 
Clean out is a receptacle of the plumbing system accessible on floor, walls, or ceiling. It is equipped with a plug or flush plate so designed as not to impair the statical view of the room. The location of clean out must be indicated in the plan since it is intended to be opened. It should be sized equal to the diameter of the waste pipe where it is to be connected. Clean out must be readily accessible to the plumber in case of waste line stoppage. Number 4. The right slope or grade of the waste pipe. The ideal position of horizontal line is 2% or 2 cm per meter length. Scientific tests and experiments reveal that when the grade or slope of the pipe is increased from 2% to 4%, trap cell loss occurs. Clean out. Clean out are screw type fittings with a cap to allow access to the inside of the sanitary drain pipes. Floor cleanouts are found in horizontally positioned building drain or sewer lines, while wall cleanouts are placed in vertically positioned stacks. Trap seal loss. Trap seal loss means the loss or escape of standing water inside the bee trap. This is usually caused by siphonage induced by rapid flow of waste inside the pipe. It is also referred to as water seal escape. Siphonage is the result of minus pressure in the drainage system. Number 5 is the right size of the pipe. Must be of sufficient diameter to accommodate velocity of flow, making them as nearly as scarring as necessary. Scarring is to flush or to wash to remove dirt and grease by flowing through. And here are the findings of the committees for a good waste pipe installation. And lastly, is the manner of joining pipes. And judicious connections of fittings should not be permitted on any plumbing installation. Each kind of pipe has its own manner of joining as recommended and specified. Any alteration or deviation from the manufacturer's specifications will only endanger the effectiveness of the pipe. Coughing is a type of joint used for cast iron pipe having hub and spigot ends. Waste pipe is classified into two types depending upon the kind of fixtures it will serve, direct waste and indirect waste. Direct waste is one with terminal directly connected to the plumbing system. And these are the different types of fixtures served by the direct waste. While indirect waste refers to a connection with terminal not directly connected to the plumbing system. Fixtures served by indirect waste are soda fountain, bar waste, refrigeration, and drinking fountain. These are the recommended size of waste pipe for the following fixtures. The fixture branch. The fixture branch is a drain line where each plumbing fixture is connected horizontally. It must slope 1 8 to 1 half inch per feet, beginning with the fixture farthest from the stack, for proper flow of waste through the branch. Branch piping serves urinals, water closets, showers, or tubs. It may be copper, approved plastic, galvanized steel, or cast iron. Note that when these fixtures are not on the branch, the piping may be run on the floor or in the wall behind the fixtures. The soil pipe. The soil pipe is any pipe that receives and conveys discharges of water closet with or without the discharge coming from other fixtures to the house drain or house sewer. The size of the soil pipe. So far, there is no definite mathematical formula ever formulated to determine the size of the soil pipe required for a particular installation. However, it still uses the fixture unit. The experiment showed that a 100 mm diameter soil pipe would effectively serve up to 140 water closets. The ventilation of the pipe should be looked into because it promotes efficiency of the entire plumbing installation. The soil branch is a soil pipe installed horizontally with lateral or vertical connections that receives the discharges of water closet with or without additional plumbing fixtures. 
The size of the soil branch. According to the plumbing code, not more than two water closets shall discharge into any 75 mm diameter horizontal soil branch, house sewer, or house drain. Noise is one of the serious problems of plumbing installations. It is the water rushing down through the soil pipe that creates various irritating noise, while condensation, on the other hand, causes the dripping of water inside the ceiling. The solution to noise is that soil pipes should not be in contact with plastered walls or ceiling. While in condensation, we must apply good quality anti-sweat covering materials to the soil pipe installation. The house drain. The house drain is the portion that receives discharges of all soil and waste stacks and conveys the same to the house sewer. It is sometimes referred as the collection line of a plumbing system. It can be installed underground or may be suspended below the floor or inside the ceiling. There are four classification of house drain. Number one is the combined drain. It is a type of house drain that receives discharges of sanitary waste as well as storm water. It is the oldest form of house drain and is already phased out and is no longer permitted. Number two is the sanitary drain. The sanitary drain receives the discharges of sanitary and domestic waste only. Storm water is not allowed in the sanitary drain. The industrial drain. It is a house drain that receives discharges from industrial equipment that contains some objectionable acid wastes. And lastly, the storm drain. The storm drain conveys all storm clear water or surface water waste except sanitary waste. Size of house drain. Before finding the size of house drain, its service must be known first, whether the purpose is for sanitary waste or as a storm drain. For sanitary waste, the volume of the fixture unit discharges is considered as the determining factor. For a storm drain, the roof area that accumulates the major rainfall water will be the basis in determining the size of the pipe with reference to the table below. The greater slope of the house drain. It is recommended under any circumstances that a 2% slope for the house drain should be maintained. However, there are circumstances where less than 2% slope was adopted. It is also can be estimated by the following formula. So these are the requirements by the National Plumbing Code on the location of cleanout of the house drain. House drain appliances. Number one is the house trap. The house trap consists of the backflow valve. It is a device used to prevent the reversal of flow. It is installed in a house drain or branches of the house drain, near the foundation wall or near the toilet room underfloor. It is set in a level position to attain its full effectiveness. Two patterns of back for valve. The balance valve and the unbalanced valve. The balance valve is the most preferred because of the characteristics of non-interference in the movement of air inside the drainage system. While the unbalanced valve, it is similar to the balance valve in appearance. However, it is not preferred due to the poor performance in the past. The area drain. The area drain consists of a running trap installed under the basement floor. Its minimum size is 10 mm or 4 inches pipe to drain basement entryways, loading platforms, or driveways. The floor drain. The floor drain is a receptacle used to receive water to be drained from the floor. It is usually installed on basement floor, below kitchen sink, vicinity of the laundry, and bathroom. Yard Catch Basin Yard Catch Basin is defined as a receptacle used to catch surface water drained from cemented courts, driveways, and yards. It could be a terminal for drain tile installation used to drain water from athletic fields. The Garage Catch Basin is a device designed to convey wastes from garage, wash rack, 
grease pits, and repair floors in the house street. The function of garage basin is to retain these noxious materials and discharge the associated water into the house drain. It also includes drain tile receptor, sewage ejector, automatic water siphon, sump pit, and grease basins. The storm drain. The storm drain is that unit of the plumbing system that conveys rain or storm water to a suitable terminal. As a general rule, Storm drain is not permitted to discharge into a septic tank or to the main sewer line. It is installed providing a slope of not more than 2% per meter run. A combination of Y and 1-8 bend or long radius fitting is appropriate for any change of direction. Splash pan A splash pan is a collector of water coming down from the downspout. These are the classifications of storm drain. The inside storm drain. It is sometimes located under the basement floor or within the walls of the building. It is commonly found in buildings constructed along congested business district or building that occupies the entire frontage of the lot. The outside storm drain. It is installed outside the foundation wall of the building. It is also possible on location where the lot is not totally occupied by the building. Lastly, the overhead storm drain. It is adopted when the street drainage is higher in elevation than the basement floor of the building. The purpose is to avail of the gravity flow of water. So in determining the size of the storm drain, we must follow the following considerations. So here is a sample problem. What size of storm drain is adequate to serve a roof having a slope of 2% with dimensions of 20 by 30 meters? So, ang una natin gagawin ay magsasolve tayo for the roof area. So, 20 multiplied by 30 is equal to 600 square meter. Next step ay mag-refer tayo sa table. So, sabi sa ating problem, yung roof natin ay may slope na 2%. So, titingnan natin under 2% slope kung saan papasok yung 600 square meter. So, obviously, papasok siya sa 700. Kaya naman, yung kukunin nating diameter of pipe is 150 millimeter or 6 inches. The house sewer. The house sewer is sometimes called the building sewer. It is that portion of the horizontal drainage system which starts from the outer face of the building and terminates at the main sewer in the street or septic tank. Note that the efficiency of a drainage installation depends upon the performance of the house sewer. The house sewer is connected to the main sewer by boring a small hole through the concrete pipe and by entering at 45 degree angle or directly from the top. Size of the house sewer The old practice is to use 150 mm or 6 inches diameter cement or vitrified clay pipe for house sewer. If plastic pipe or its interior surface texture equivalent is used, the diameter can be reduced to 100 mm. In finding the slope of a house sewer, we'll divide its height by its length and multiply it by 100. And lastly, the sanitary sewer main. The sanitary sewer main is a pipe which the wastewater flows as it is conveyed from a building to the wastewater treatment plant. Its typical minimum size is 8 inches in diameter. Hi, my name is Hannah, and I will be discussing about plumbing ventilation. Plumbing ventilation. Ventilation of a plumbing system is portion of the drainage pipe installation designed to maintain balanced atmospheric pressure inside the system to prevent problems like trap seal loss, retardation of flow, and deterioration of the materials. Ventilating a drainage system requires a thorough knowledge of the principles governing the natural laws of nature, such as the principles governing the atmosphere, the principles of gravity, and the principles of siphon, pressure, and vacuum. Atmospheric pressure and drainage system The surface of the Earth is subjected to an atmospheric pressure valued about 65.47 newtons at sea level. A pressure less than 1 atmospheric pressure will create minus pressure, 
and that with greater than one atmospheric pressure will create a plus pressure. Compressibility is one of the properties of gas. Air can be compressed or withdrawn from a space or container. When compressed, pressure greater than one atmospheric pressure is developed. When withdrawn, it is called vacuum or partially vacuum, depending upon the volume of the air removed. The partial vacuum would indicate a pressure less than one atmosphere. So we will now discuss about the sanitary drainage problems. So the first problem would be tropsy loss. It is the most common and serious problem being encountered in a drainage system. It can be attributed to inadequate ventilation of the trap and subsequent minus and plus pressure inside the system. Tropsy loss may be attributed to any of the following factors. Siphonage, back pressure, evaporation, wind effect, and capillary action. Siphonage it is a result of a minus pressure in the drainage system. So if the trap of a common seal is open and exposed to the atmosphere, both the inlet and outlet, RFS, will underbalance atmospheric pressure. So the tendency of water seal to move is remote. There are two types of siphonage, the direct or self-siphonage and indirect or momentum siphonage. Direct or self-siphoning. This occurs in unventilated traps which serves as oval bottom fixtures like lavatories or slab sinks. Self-siphonage is created when a rapid flow of water passing through the pipe siphon down the water seal inside the traps with no vent provision. While the indirect or momentum siphoning is a result of a minus pressure in the pipe created by heavy discharge of water from a fixture installed on a line serving another fixture at a lower floor. So the second factor would be back pressure. It is caused by a plus pressure. So when a large amount of water flow drops downward rapidly forming a slug like, the air inside the pipe will be compressed downward. So in the absence of adequate ventilation, the compressed air will be forced to find its way out through a weaker point. The trap seal being the weakest point will give way and blow out of the fixture. So the third one would be evaporation. It is a minor problem and is less probable to drain the water inside the trap. Evaporation happens only on floor drain which are not regularly used to admit water but exposed to extreme temperature. So an example of which is a pit trap on a floor drain of a basement where there is no regular water flowing in it. So the fourth one would be wind effect. A wind velocity passing over the top of the soil pipe may affect the trap seal. So this kind of trap seal loss is one improbable thing to happen by removing the entire water seal inside a pea trap. So the last factor of a trap seal loss is the capillary action. So this kind of trap seal loss also seldom happens and is rarely experienced by homeowners. Capillary action is draining of the water seal caused by foreign objects like thread or string suspended and extended over the outlet arm of the trap. So the second problem encountered in the sanitary drainage system is the retardation of flow. Retarded water flow inside a pipe is due to the effects of atmospheric pressure and or gravity. One example is our experience of pouring liquid milk from a tin can. When only one hole is punched in the can, the liquid milk would hardly flow out of the container. But when another hole is made on the other side of the can, the container is ventilated and the liquid milk flows smoothly out of the container. The same principle is also applied in the plumbing system by providing ventilation pipes to equalize or balance the atmospheric pressure inside the plumbing installation. So there are many ways and forms of ventilation in a plumbing system. So the ways and forms depends upon the location of the fixtures or how they are combined or grouped. 
So these are the types of ventilation in a plumbing system. So each type of ventilation has a definite function to perform in a complete plumbing system and may be grouped into two major classifications. So the first one is the pipe used to ventilate and the second is the pipe used to maintain the balanced atmospheric pressure inside the waste pipe system. So the other types of ventilation whose main purpose is to protect the trap seal against back pressure and siphoning are called individual unit, circuit, wet, and loop vent. So what is vent pipe? Vents are the pipes that introduce sufficient air into the drainage system to reduce air turbulence from siphoning or back pressure and to reduce sewer gases to the outside. Vent piping may be copper, plastic, cast iron, or steel. So as what we can see in the slide, as water and other waste drains through the trap, the air is pulled inside the vent to equalize the pressure. So the trap seal prevented sewer gases and unwanted odor from leaking into your home. So let us now go to the types of ventilation. The first one is the main soil and waste vent. This portion of the soil stuck above the highest installed fixture branch extending through the roof. So this serves as the terminal for the main vent and other vents of the system. There are four general conditions in installing the main soil and waste ventilation. It must be installed as direct as possible, short radius fitting should be avoided, long horizontal line must be avoided, and should have the same diameter as the soil or waste pipe. The second one is the main vent. So the main vent is that portion of the vent pipe system serving as a terminal for smaller forms of individual and group fixture trap ventilation. It is sometimes referred to as collecting vent line. So the main soil vent is the source through which air is admitted to the plumbing system serves as a means of eliminating objectionable odors. So on the next slide, we will be discussing about the size of the main vent. So, magbibigay na lang po ako ng example on how to determine the size of the main vent. So, example number one, determine the size of the main vent that will serve 30 fixture units. So, may table po tayo about po siya sa maximum permissible length of vents for soil and waste stacks in meters. So, since we have a given 30 fixture unit, according sa table, yung size na kailangan natin na main vent is a 63 millimeter diameter pipe for the main pipe since it has a maximum of 36 fixture unit. So another problem, how large is the main vent required for various fixtures consisting of 4 water closets, 4 lavatories, 3 showers, and 2 kitchen sink installed on the first floor of a 2-story building 6 meter high? So refer to table 5.1, this is about the fixture unit values. So we first need to know the number of fixture values. So so water closet, we have a 6 unit. So 6 times 4 is 24, the lavatory is 1, 1 times 4 is 4, so shower is 2, so naging 6 units na siya, and then sa kitchen sink we have 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, so a total of 38 units. Since we have a total fixture unit of 38, referring to table 11, 1, we can use a 10 millimeter soil or waste stack since it can have a maximum of 48 units and other column diameter of vent pipe, a 63 millimeter pipe could ventilate 48 fixture units as high as 19.5 meter. So, makikita po natin to dun sa table ulit. So, the third type is an individual vent. It is sometimes referred to as a back vent. So, a portion of the vent pipe system that serves as a single trap. 
It is the easiest method of ensuring the preservation of a trap seal, but the most costly because of the number of vent pipes required in a venting system. So the fourth type would be unit vent. Unit vent is a portion of a vent pipe system that ventilates two fixture traps that discharges as another form of individual vent with identical form of back venting having the same principles in function. The fifth is the circuit or loop vent, where two or more fixture traps are installed on a horizontal soil or waste branch. So the use of circuit vent reduces the cost of plumbing installations. So another problem, determine the size of the circuit or loop vent. A group of five lavatories is to be circuit vented. Find the size of the circuit vent pipe. So, so for the total fixture unit, referring to table 5, 1, one lavatory is equal to one unit. So, we have a five lavatories. So, one times five is five units. Referring to table 11, 1, so the size is 38 millimeter since it has a maximum of eight fixture units. So the sixth type is relief vent. So this is installed to ventilate the soil in waste pipe and the connecting branches rather than the fixture traps. The seventh type is the loop vent. One type of ventilation used in fixtures in a room away from partition. So the use of loop vent is not practical but sometimes tolerated only when other methods of ventilation could not be possible. So the next would be wet vent. This is the portion of the vent pipe system where liquid waste regularly flows. So the wet venting method uses a single vent pipe to provide venting for all the fixtures of one or two bathroom groups that are located on the same floor. So another solving to determine the size of the wet vent pipe. Example, determine the size of the wet vent necessary to ventilate a group of fixtures consisting of one water closet, two lavatories, and one bathtub. So solve for the total fixture unit, refer to table 5-1. So water closet has a six unit, lavatories has one, and the bathtub has two, a total of 10 units. So, referring to table 11 1, to get the maximum size, we have a total fixture of 10 units. So, the size of the 50 mm has the maximum of 18 units of fixture. So, the 50 mm size shall be used. So, let's go to Sovent system. Sovent system was introduced by Fritz Sommer of Switzerland and it is first presented in 1962. So this is a new concept in plumbing and has almost eliminated the vent stack and other forms of ventilation but still attain the desired functions and effectiveness. So vent deaerator consists of an air separation chamber with an internal nose piece, a stack inlet, a pressure relief outlet at the top, and a stack outlet at the bottom. The deaerator is designed to overcome tendency of the falling waste to stock up excessive back pressure at the bottom of the stock and the flow is decelerated by the bend into the horizontal drain. Hello everyone! I will discuss about drain and vent pipe design. Drainage fixture units The draining rate for plumbing fixtures is based upon the drainage fixture unit or DFU. Table 14.1 refers to the drainage fixture units and minimum trap size for selected plumbing fixtures. The DFU is an arbitrarily chosen measure that allows all of types of plumbing fixtures to be expressed in common terms, that is, a fixture having twice the instantaneous drainage flow rate of a second fixture would have a fixture unit value twice as large.
the water supply fixture unit or WSFU and drainage fixture unit may differ slightly for a single fixture because the rates of filling and draining are different. Design approach The approach used to size drain and vent lines relies on tabular information found in cone. Table 14.2 refers to the maximum drainage fixture units that may be connected to horizontal fixture branch and stock based on pipe size. Table 14.2 indicates the maximum load in DFU and maximum pipe length for given pipe diameter. The minimum pipe diameter is based on the total connected DFU. In the case of vent lines, maximum developed length for a given pipe is also a criterion. Developed length is the center line length of the lines, excluding traps and trap arms. Note that it is important to ensure that a larger pipe diameter does not flow into a pipe having a smaller diameter. Traps and trap arms are sized based on a specific type of fixture. Refer to Table 14.1 for minimum trap sizes. Some fixtures, such as urinals and water closets, have integral traps built into the fixture, so trap size does not need to be specified. Table 14.3 refers to the maximum drainage fixture units that may be connected to a building drain or building sewer based on pipe size when the building drain and sewer serves one building. Table 14.4a refers to the required vent diameter and maximum length of vent based on soil and waste stock size and connected drainage fixture units. Table 14.4b refers to the required vent diameter and maximum length of vent based on soil and waste stock size and connected drainage fixture units for SI metric units. Example number 1. The following number and type of plumbing fixtures serve two apartment units two bathtubs, two water closets, two lavatories, and two kitchen sinks. Assume the horizontal fixture branch serving these fixtures flow into the waste stock. Assume the vent stock extends through the roof and is 22 feet long. Determine the minimum pipe diameter required for the horizontal fixture branch, waste stock, and vent stock. From Table 14.1, the DFU values for the plumbing fixtures are extracted. DFU are then totaled. Two bathtubs, two DFU each is equal to four. Two water closets, flush tank, four DFU each is equal to eight. Two lavatories, one DFU each is equal to two. Two kitchen sinks, two DFU each is equal to four. For the total drainage fixture units, which is equal to 18 DFU. For the horizontal fixture branch from table 14.2, a 3 inch diameter pipe is selected. A 3 inch diameter pipe used as a horizontal fixture branch can serve up to 20 DFU. For the waste stock, from table 14.2, a 2.5 in diameter pipe can be selected, but the 3 inch diameter horizontal fixture branch would then flow into a smaller pipe. Therefore, a 3 inch diameter waste duct is a prudent choice. For the vent stock, from table 14.4a, a 1.5 inch diameter pipe is selected based on a 3 
8-inch diameter soil and raised stock and a capacity of up to 30 BFE. Example number 2. The following number and type of plumbing fixtures serve 6 apartment units with 2 apartments on each floor, 6 bathtubs, 6 water closets, 6 lavatories, and 6 kitchen sinks. Assume horizontal fixture branches serving these fixtures flow into the waste dock at 3 locations or 3 intervals, 2 apartments per interval. Assume the building drain is sloped at 1 fourth inch per foot and the vent stock extends through the roof and is 42 feet long. Determine the minimum pipe diameter required for the horizontal fixture branches, waste stock, building drain, and main vent stock. From Table 14.1 the DFU values for the plumbing fixtures are extracted. DFU are then totaled. 6 bathtubs, 2 DFU each is equal to 12. 6 water closets, flush tank, 4 DFU each is equal to 24. 6 lavatories, 1 DFU each is equal to 6. 6 kitchen sinks, 2 DFU each is equal to 12. For a total drainage fixture units, which is equal to 54. For the horizontal fixture branch from table 14.2, a 3 inch diameter pipe is selected. A 3 inch diameter pipe used as a horizontal fixture branch can serve up to 20 DFU. Two apartment units have two bathtubs, two water closets, two lavatories, and two kitchen sinks. A total of 18 DFU, just like in example number 1. For the waste stock from table 14.2, a 4 inch diameter waste stock is selected. A 3 inch diameter pipe used as a waste stock can serve up to 240 DFU. For the building drain, from table 14.3, a 4-inch diameter pipe is required. A 4-inch diameter pipe used as a building drain can serve up to 216 DFU at a slope of 1 fourth inch per feet. For the vent stock, from table 14.4a, a 2.5-inch diameter pipe is selected. Based on a 4-inch diameter soil and waste stock, capacity of up to 100 BFU and a developed length of 42 feet. The sewage in its disposal The collection and safe disposal of human waste are among the most critical problems of environmental health. Recent statistical report revealed that most of the waterborne diseases such as dysentery, typhoid, diarrhea, and other intestinal disorders are prevalent in areas where there is no proper and scientific sewage disposal system. It was reported that when human wastes are deposited in a pit, typhoid and dysentery causing organisms do not travel horizontally in the soil. These harmful bacteria neither move by themselves. These harmful organisms are carried somewhere through water flows, flies, rodents, cockroaches, and other vermin which cause contamination. It is therefore important not only to know the different type of sewage disposal system but also to understand the scientific value of the system. Sewage disposal system has four types, the cistern, the freeway, the septic tank, and the public sewer line. The cistern is a hole in the ground curved with stones, bricks, concrete hollow blocks, or other materials laid in such a manner as to allow raw contaminated sewage to leach into the soil. The organic waste accumulate and finally disposed by the disintegration process. Cispole lack the ability to filter waste and the sewage eventually contaminates surrounding soil. Freebie Freebie is a concrete sealed vault with a wooden shelter constructed for the collection of raw sewage. 
The disintegration of excrement is accomplished in the same manner as in a cesspool. It is objectionable because of the danger of contaminating the source of water supply. Septic tank Septic tank is a device or receptacle used to expedite the decomposition of the elements contained in a raw sewage waste. Raw sewage waste consists of water and sepalable solid called organic materials that can be precipitated in a septic tank in a very short time. Public Sewer Line Public Sewer Line is a public sewage system operated and maintained by the government consisting of a sewage treatment plant that conveys the raw sewage from buildings and houses to a disposal system. Sa apat na uri ng sewage disposal system, ang inire-recommenda labang na gamitin ng mga sanitary authorities ay ang public sewer line at ang septic tank. Kaya ating tatalakayin ang public sewer line at ang septic tank. First is public sewer line. Public sewer line is classified into three types according to the kinds of waste it disposes. Types are the combination public sewer, the sanitary sewer, and the storm drain. Combination public sewer Combination public sewer is the oldest type of public sewer that conveys both storm water and sanitary waste. This type of public sewer is already obsolete and no longer allowed by sanitary authorities. Ang combination public sewer ay hindi na pinahihintulutan gamitin ng mga sanitary authority dahil sa kapag malakas ang ulan na maaari itong mapaw at maging sanhi ng pollution sa tubig. Sanitary Sewer Sanitary Sewer is a public sewer facility that carries regular sanitary waste only. It terminates in a modern sewage dispersal plant. Rainwater is not permitted to enter into this type of public sewer. Sanitary Sewer is classified into two types, the intercepting or trap line sewer and the tributary or contributing sewer. Intercepting sewer is a sanitary sewer that conveys sanitary waste to a dispersal plant. It is commonly made of concrete pipe that varies in size from 60 cm to 3 meters in diameter. The pipes are laid underground to a minimum depth of 3 meters depending upon the natural contour of the ground. Tributary sewer Tributary sewer is classified as an intercepting sewer branch. The pipe is made of either vitrified clay or concrete pipe laid in an open trench. It is generally smaller in diameter, installed not more than 3 meters below the street grade, and terminate into the intercepting sewer. And the last type of public sewer line is the storm drain. Storm drain is another kind of public sewer line that carries storm water. It terminates in a natural drain such as canal lakes or rivers manhole is classified as a device of the main and storm sewer it serves as man's access for inspection cleaning and repair it is constructed out of bricks stone adobe or concrete at an interval distance from 75 to 150 meters materials required for the public sewer line could be determined under the following procedures First, from the plan of the public sewer line, find the net distance between manholes to be laid with concrete pipe. Total distance minus the space area occupied by the manhole. Second, the net distance found divided by the length of one pipe at one meter long, regardless of its diameter. And last, subtract 3% to 4% from the obtained number of pipes in order to get the exact number required. Sample problem Determine the number of 60 cm diameter concrete pipe Solution First, find the net length to be laid with concrete pipe The distance between station 1 and 2 is 100 meters Subtract the space occupied by manhole Therefore, the net distance is 99 meters Second, Divide the net distance by the length of one pipe. Third, subtract 3% to get the exact number of pipes. If there are 96 pipes, only 95 joints will be grouted or plastered 
because the two ends will terminate at the manhole. Based on the table, concrete pipes with 60 cm diameter needs 0.132 bags of cement and 0.0165 cubic meter sand per joint. Sewage ejector Sewage ejector refers to the pump that will discharge waste in the sump and transfer it to the house drain installed overhead. Sewage ejector is necessary when the public sewer line was installed at a dip from 2 to 4 meters below the street level. Another type of sewage disposal that is recommended by sanitary authorities is the septic tank. Septic tank is a receptacle or vault used to collect organic waste discharge from the house sewer. The main function of a septic tank is to liquefy and precipitate solid waste purifying odorous materials. The composition of organic matter from human waste is a bacteriological process caused by aerobic bacteria called aerobes, anaerobic bacteria called anaerobes, and facultative bacteria. The life process of aerobic bacteria is in the presence of material oxygen. The anaerobic bacteria, on the other hand, functions in the absence of free oxygen. Likewise, facultative bacteria also functions even with or without free oxygen. These three types of bacteria have no relation to disease. They thrive naturally in sewage and will function when conditions are favorable in terms of food supply, temperature, and moisture. However, even when conditions are favorable, these bacteria will cease to exist in the presence of antiseptics or disinfectants and to discharge large amount or volume of waste and water containing disinfectant. There are different gases produced inside the septic tank, ranging from organic to non-organic gases. These are Methane gas is a combination of hydrogen and carbon, a principal component of natural gas. Carbon dioxide is a combination of carbon and oxygen. It is the simplest oxide of carbon. Carbon monoxide is a byproduct of methane classified as poisonous gas. Hydrogen evolves as a moist gas from organic waste. Hydrogen sulfide is a colorless gas with offensive odor. Sulfur dioxide is also a colorless gas having an irritating odor. These gases are discharged into the atmosphere through the ventilation pipe. Septic tank is constructed from either of the following materials. Reinforced concrete, plastered concrete hollow blocks, prefabricated asbestos, thin metal and plastic. The most popular and widely used material for construction of septic tank is plastered concrete hollow blocks or reinforced concrete. General condition in constructing a septic tank. The concrete or masonry septic tank is usually constructed in a rectangular form. The reason is to retard the even flow of the waste that is necessary to avoid disturbing the decomposition processes inside the tank. The minimum inside dimension of septic tank is 90 cm wide by 150 cm long. For effective decomposition of the organic materials inside the septic tank, a 120 cm depth of the liquid content is necessary. It is not impractical, though, to construct a tank of greater depth provided that the depth should not be deeper than the natural groundwater table. The inlet and outlet inverts of the septic tank shall be long-term sanitarity. The inverts are installed in the wall of the tank at least 120 cm from its bottom floor equal space from both sides. The invert is extended down the liquid of the tank not more than 30 cm. This is to assure a smooth delivery of the incoming sewage below the scum line. The bottom of the digestion chamber should be sloped to one low point. 
The purpose is to gather the settled organic materials into one mass to favor the propagation of the anaerobic bacteria. The septic tank should be provided with a manhole extended a few centimeters above the surface of the soil to overcome infiltration of surface water. This manhole will serve the purpose of cleaning, inspection, and repair of the tank. Septic tank for large plumbing installations are provided with suspended compartment attached to the ceiling slab of the tank. The baffle plate is extended down the bottom of the tank about 40 cm below the scum line. Each compartment of the tank separated by baffle plate is provided with manhole. The septic tank should be constructed near the surface of the ground because the correction of the waste depends upon the extent of oxidation and the existence of an aerobic bacteria, another kind of bacteria that split and digest the effluent is the aerobic bacteria, a kind of bacteria that survive only in the subsoil not more than 150 cm below the surface. Oxidation of the effluent deeper than 150 cm will become extremely difficult. Good day, my name is Rona and this is my report. Size of the septic tank We have principles in determining the size of the septic tank. Number 1. For a family of 6 persons, the minimum tank capacity should be approximately 1.3 cubic meters with a minimum size of 90 centimeter wide by 150 centimeter long and 120 centimeter depth. Number 2. A very large tank is not advisable because the bacterial activities will be retarded. The size of the tank is proportionally based on the number of persons expected to be served. In other words, the volume of the tank has a rational proportion with the volume of incoming waste for the bacterial activities to be in favorable condition. Number 3. For residential installation, the practice is to allow 5 to 6 cubic feet of tank volume per person. Thus, a septic tank that will serve a family of 12 persons must have a liquid capacity of 6 times 12 equals 72 cubic feet or 538 gallons. Note that 1 cubic foot equals to 748 gallons. Table 4, number 2 is the quantity of sewage flow. Dito nakapaloob yung rate ng pag-discharge ng wastewater sa kada establishment per person sa isang araw. Halimbawa, yung small dwelling with seasonal occupancy which is 50 gallons per day yung discharge ng kada person. Sumunod naman is yung single family dwelling which is 75 gallons per person per day and so on and so forth sa mga nakalista rito. And itong table na to ay gagamitin natin para sa problem natin mamaya. Table 4, number 3. Ito naman yung suggested size of the septic tank sa number of person na isa-serve niya. Nandito na kapalog yung inside weed, inside length, depth of liquid, and inside clear height of the tank sa residential and commercial or industrial. Table 4, number 4 is the maximum allowance and large accumulation in a septic tank. So we have sample problem number 1. A motel with toilet and bath and kitchen facilities will serve a maximum of 100 persons. Determine the capacity and dimensions of the septic tank. And here's the solution. Step 1. Magre-refer lang tayo sa table 4 number 2 na ipinakita ko sa inyo kanina. Under hotel without private bath, the weights per person per day is 50 gallons. Imumultiply lang natin yung 100 times 50 gallons will be 5,000 gallons a day. Step 2. Using the formula, volume is equals to 1.125 plus 0.75Q, where V is the liquid volume of the tank in gallons and Q is the daily sewage flow in gallons. Note that 1.125 and 0.75 are constant. Step 3. Sa substitute lang natin yung value ng Q to 5,000 gallons. Volume will be 1.125 
plus the quantity of 0.75 times 5,000 gallons. Volume is equals to 3,751 gallons. Note that in 1 cubic meter, meron tayong 264 gallons. And we will find the volume of the septic tank in cubic meter. Gagawin lang natin, didivide lang natin yung 3,751 by 264. And we will get the amount of 14.2 cubic meters. So yung 14.2 cubic meters, yun yung capacity of the septic tank. Step 5. To find the dimensions of the septic tank if the maximum depth is 1.50 meters and the width is assumed to be 3 meters. So yung formula ng pagkuha ng volume ng septic tank is length times width times the depth. Para mahanap natin yung length, manipulate lang natin yung formula. So we will have length is equals to volume divided by width times the depth. Then, substitute lang natin yung nakuha nating volume kanina, which is 14.2 cubic meter, and the width is 3 meter, times the depth, which is 1.50 meters. So, makukuha nating value is equals to 3.16 meters. So, ito yung magiging length ng septic tank natin. And, yun lang yung process ng pagkuha ng capacity and dimensions of the septic tank. The location of the septic tank shall observe the following considerations. Number 1. The septic tank may be located closer to the building it will serve, providing a minimum distance of 2 meters from the outside wall. Number 2. As much as possible, the septic tank should not be located closer to the doors or windows. Number 3. Septic tank should be at least 15 meters away from any source of water supply. The farther, the better. Requirements for a satisfactory disposal of human waste. Number one, there should be no contamination of ground surface that may enter into the spring or wells. Number two, there should be no contamination of surface water. Number three, the surface soil should not be contaminated. Number four, excreta should not be accessible into animals, flies, cockroaches vermin, and the like. Number five, there should be no odor and unsightly conditions. Number six, the methods used should be simple and economical in terms of construction operation. Safety precautions. Before cleaning or repair, septic tank must not be poorly aerated or ventilated, lack free oxygen, and contain harmful and dangerous gases. Under these conditions, if one enters a septic tank for repairs or cleaning purposes, he or she may meet almost instant death. To avoid such situation, remove the manhole cover few days in advance of the work and supply fresh air inside the tank while work is being done. Septic tanks may also contain inflammable gases that might result to an explosion. So as a precaution, when working in the dark, Provide an electric emergency light with properly insulated cord or a flashlight powered by dry sun. Do not ignite flames near the septic tank. Be alert to a shock and electrical wire hazards. That's all. Thank you for listening. God bless.